first time I brought them to Disney, I thought they were going to go for, you know, the big superheroes. They were looking at princesses. And they all wanted to be, you know, Minnie Mouse. And then I said, but what about Mickey? And then I'm saying to myself, you know what? It's okay. You know why it's okay? Because they're talking, they're finding themselves. We may thrust them forward into the future, but the course will always be theirs to choose. Celine wants all kids to find themselves, not just her own. And she hopes her partnership with Nu 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 will help. The clothes in her new line are gender neutral. Some parents might be a little worried or concerned seeing their child put on their heels or put on their nails. I'm not here Celine Dion singer who's got three kids who's going to tell the world right now you should do it this way you should not do that this is wrong I, I, listen I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not doing that let them tell you what they feel like new 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 has been around for years its founders created the fashion line out of necessity when they couldn't find clothing for their own kids fashion has the power to shape people minds we're at Celine Nunu trying to shape the future of all human beings by saying, find your own individuality. We bring a new order uh, as a concept into the world. Into the world. You know what? You don't know what they're going to become later. And you don't want for them to have psychologically a problem of growth and say, I'm supposed to be like that, I'm supposed to say that, I'm supposed to dress like this because I'm a guy, I'm a boy, I'm supposed to do... No, no, you don't know. Let people be who they are as quick and as soon as possible. She really did open up on many different fronts. Um, and I, I was just asking our producers, is, is Celine doing new music? Is she gonna finish up her music? That's gold. It's like the greatest person for clothing I've ever seen. Celine Dion is a fantastically trusting person because she obviously has people in her organization that tell her the weirder you yeah. are, the cooler you I are. Know. This is her like leaning into her persona. Yes. I think like that's where I carried us a little bit. Like this this is way like above and beyond though. <laughs> Because she is just somebody that you never thought would even have this side and the fact that she bought into it fully right. is incredible. A new generation of biotech foods is getting close to the grocery aisles. By early next year, the first foods made from gene-edited plants and animals are expected to begin selling. The first products will likely be salad dressings or granola bars made with soybean oil tweaked to be extra heart healthy. Researchers also are pursuing other possibilities, including wheat with triple the usual fiber and mushrooms that don't brown. Yesterday, we brought you what? We brought you the uh, story of how new geneti genetically altered uh, fruits and vegetables and even animals could soon be entering the marketplace. But, now ask yourself something. Should we be changing a plant or animal's genetics? And if so, to what end? 
What about restrictions? Some? None? Then there's the question of whether we are or should play God, right? Starting next year, as you stroll through your local grocery store, you may come across food from animals or plants that may have had their DNA altered. For years, farmers have been genetically manipulating crops and animals by selectively breeding to get offspring for certain traits. But now scientists have perfected a process called gene editing, which was developed in the late 1900s. The process will alter foods and plants more accurately at less cost. Experts say they act like molecular scissors, altering the letters of an organism's own genetic alphabet. As a result of this process, fruits and vegetables will last longer. Scientists are also hoping gene editing could save plant species from being wiped out by things such as disease. To make uh, even more precise uh, changes that uh, target specific spots in the genes. It, so in some respects, it's a continuation of what we've been doing, but with more specificity. Is there a limit to what we should do when it comes to this particular field? I, as a layman, would think, oh, this sounds a little mysterious, almost scary. But you, as a scientist, would say what? Well, I certainly think that uh, there are reasons to be concerned about the safety. The U.S. National Academy of Science says gene editing is one of the breakthroughs we need to improve food production. The U.S. Humane Society supports gene editing if it means an end to pig castrations and cow dehorning. However, Paul Thompson, a professor of agriculture at Michigan State University, says beyond playing God, there's an ethical question that's been debated for at least the last 20 years of whether you need to change the animal or change the system. Although some say that gene editing could be a good thing, others are concerned that it may not be necessary and fear that it could get out of control because it's not being regulated by the government at this time. I think one of the issues that's particularly significant when we start to talk about animals is that uh, unlike uh, uh, genetic engineering of a corn plant or a soybean, uh, the animals have feelings and so we have some additional ethical concerns uh, that have to do with the way that a genetic modification affects the way that an animal feels, the way that they fare or do in, or do in the world. What, what, is, what is the worst case scenario? What is the uh doomsday scenario if there is one with our continuing this approach? Well, I'm not sure that uh, there's a, a doomsday scenario. Uh, you know, there are uh, cases, even with just ordinary plant breeding, uh, where um, people have failed to pick something up and uh, um, you know you wind up with uh, 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 cases of uh, toxicities getting into the food system. Uh, I don't actually think that uh, uh, genetic modification itself is uh, tied to uh, you know sort of end of the world type scenarios oh. um, and uh, but we could do things that uh, uh, we probably shouldn't do and probably would uh, alter uh, certainly our sense of our place in the world. Hacking the body through technology could have the potential to revolutionize our daily lives. From chipping to bionic innovations, recent advancements could change our relationship with technology and even the human body itself. Moving on to our top international story this hour, we are following some disturbing news out of the tech world. As this week, the Confederation of British Industry, or CBI, issued a warning about the future of microchips in the workplace. Designer Eric Frisk doesn't need a key to unlock his door. It opens electronically. In fact, he doesn't even need a key card or a fingerprint. He just swipes a digital reader with the back of his hand. Now, you might be thinking such concerns sound hyperbolic, but you would actually be sadly mistaken. Believe it or not, companies have already started microchipping employees. For example, a cafeteria kiosk producer in River Falls, Wisconsin, chipped employees last year. There are governments that run central banks. So they were the first, one of the first ones to call us to say that we've got to control our employees and we, we need to have certain access levels and we can't have that compromise, and they saw that as a solution. They need that, they need those controls.
the Stockholm subway system also has plans to modify their turnstiles so they can be opened with implanted chips. Over 3,500 Swedes now have microchips under their skin, over triple the number from a year ago. Surveys show that young people in particular are open to digital innovations. Very few worry their data could be misused. They have great confidence in their government and authorities. Implanting parties are the latest trend in Stockholm. Sweden's digital elite meet for a couple of glasses of wine and a chip under the skin. The operation costs about 150 euros and it's no more painful than having your ears pierced, say those already chipped. They see only advantages to it. Something different now. A controversial idea by British businesses is to microchip their workers to protect <laughs> company data. Supposedly. Not everyone takes the idea so casually. A European Union study warns that implanted microchips could carry some risks. They could be used to form behavioral profiles of their wearers, who may well be sacrificing privacy for efficiency. Advancements in bionic technology have meant that the focus has shifted from basic functionality to mirroring human-like qualities. And while the technology is far from perfect, it means that scientists are on track to make the gap between man and machine closer than it's ever been before. There's a really um, eerie quote from this article. Let me uh, just uh, quote here. There's no dropping it nor forgetting it. There's always going to be an ultimate backup with these microchips. But it is come to something when the CBI, which is the employers, the bosses organization, are expressing their anxiety and unease about this move. The trade union opposition to it will be absolute, but we know from recent times that what starts out as resolute opposition incrementally becomes the prevailing orthodoxy, and it would be, uh, an Aldous, it would be a dystopian. Aldous Huxley future, if that's how we all ended up, chipped by our employer. Chip seller Jovan Usterlund sees no need for risk analyses. He's certain the trend can't be stopped. He foresees chips implanted not only in hands but in heads too. Anyone not optimized in this way will be left behind. I would say in 30 years time there's a pretty clean break between organic people and non-organic people. Not using or utilizing technology to enhance themselves. It's like people say no to healthcare today. So the point is <clears throat> your research and your documentation um, give proof. I mean, for those people that are skeptical, that they go, oh, secret society, you know, go wear a tinfoil hat, conspiracy theorists. That's easy to say. But if you can respond to the challenge of that argument with serious documentation, which I think you've done a very good job in the Babylon Code of doing, respectable, I mean, the amount of footnotes is ridiculous, but it's from Main Street sources. If you're able to respond to these people who say you're a conspiracy theory or a Bible prophecy nut, but you're armed with the truth and you have the knowledge, then you can give what the Bible calls a ready defense for your faith. But, but, but as you demonstrate with your research, <coughs> this is the agenda of the secret societies. The Bilderberg group meets in Europe. They talk about things like the microchip implant. Well, where do we read about the microchip implant? Revelation 13. So a, a semi-secret society is promoting the, 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 the implementation of a microchip implant, which is in Bible prophecy in Revelation 13, a microchip implant. <laughs> And, and, and it just goes on and on. One World Economic System, Christine Neff Lagarde, I know you uh, included her in the book, head of the IMF, uh, talking about all kinds of, of occultic things, yet she's part of, a, it appears she's a part of the secret society by the kind of language she uses and heavy occult uh, talk she uses, it is, is calling for a global financial reboot And essentially what that means is a cashless society and a one world economic system, secret society promoting, furthering the agenda of a cashless society and a one world economic system. And of course that is implemented in the technology of the mark of the beast. So 
one secret society after another, especially the Illuminati, but numerous other ones, secretly their agenda is, is the driving uh, and pushing forward of Bible prophecy, the warnings, not the good things in the Bible, but the warnings in Bible prophecy of the devices of the Antichrist and Lucifer and the false prophets. So to, to, to me, that would be the final proof.